The 321 is a utility module that performs four main tasks, flip, shift, scale, and combine. It consists of three identical sections, uh, color-coded in red, yellow, and green. Each section has an input, an output, and some controls. On top of the 321, we have two outputs that provide a sum of the signals we patch to the three individual sections. And the design of the summing stage and of the audio processing is borrowed from the CGM, so it guarantees pristine audio quality. Between the input and the output of each section, we can find an attenuator that is also capable of amplifying by 60B the incoming signal, or multiplying by 2 if we're talking about CV. And then we have an inverter that inverts the signal, an offset that can add a positive or negative offset to the signal and can be turned on or off. And all these processes can be applied to CV or audio. So for example, if we patch a signal from the brain so to the red section input and the red section output to the CGM mixer, we can hear brain so sawtooth wave and we can then attenuate it or amplify it up to 6 dB which is twice the original amp. Now pay attention to the two LEDs. The red one stands for a positive voltage and the yellow one stands for a negative voltage. They seem to be just turned on, but in fact they are flashing very fast. With an audio signal like this one, they display the energy on the positive and the negative front of the waveform. If instead we used an LFO, for example, taken from Falistri's bipolar output, we can better appreciate the oscillation to the positive and the negative voltage realm, which in this case is plus 5 and minus 5 volts. Also in this case, I can attenuate the LFO or amplify it. Roughly at noon, we have more or less unity gain. And check what happens if I pass the unipolar output instead. Now only the red LED is flashing, because our signal doesn't have any negative value. Let's demonstrate this LFO manipulation over Brainsos wave folder. The second parameter we want to focus on is the inverter. Now we are using a unipolar signal, it will make it go all the way to the negative side. So if this was say 0 to 10 volts, this will be 0 to minus 10 volts. If we will apply the same concept to the audio signal, we will invert its phase. The effect is almost inaudible per se, but it will become more evident in complex patching where phase relationship is crucial, like this feedback patch. If we invert the phase, you can see that the feedback goes off. If I have a perfectly symmetrical and bipolar signal like a triangle LFO from minus 5 to plus 5 volts, the inversion will seem not to have this much of an effect. However, if I make my waveform asymmetrical, like for example a sawtooth LFO, you will hear that the direction of the ramp will change, even if the range will be the same. And the last control we need to explore is the offset. We've been keeping it off this whole time, but as soon as we push this switch to the left, we will immediately transpose up or down our signal. When the knob is set at noon, the offset should be around zero. However, being the knob and this control very sensitive and being any DC component detrimental to audio processing, we choose to add a switch that disengages this circuit completely. By playing with the offset knob, I can make a unipolar signal bipolar and vice versa. Now since this signal is unipolar, if I invert its phase, I may need to invert the offset as well to keep it bipolar. 
If I don't patch anything to a section's input but still activate the offset circuit, the 321 will output a steady DC signal that roughly goes from minus 7.5 volts up to 7.5 volts. And I can use it everywhere I want in my patches. What we said for the red section also applies to the yellow and the green one. But there is one last function of the 321 that we need to check, which is the combining function. As I said in the introduction, we have those two outputs on the top of the module that provide a sum of all the signals patched to the red, yellow and green section. Let them be audio or CV. However, there is a major difference between those two outputs. This one is the mix output and always provide the sum of whatever signal or offset goes on on the three sections. This other one, the unpatched output, only provides the sum of those sections with nothing patched to their individual output. Let's see in which cases they can be useful. So for example, if I want to blend different waveforms out of the brain's oscillator, I may want to remove any DC offset and then use the 321 as an effective audio submixer. However, we might perceive some distortion with strong signals like this one, so we have two options. We can either attenuate each section through the attenuator, or we can use this switch here that attenuates by minus 6 dB the summing stage, thus providing twice the headroom. Now we can define the balance of the different waveform through the section attenuators. And if we crank everything to the maximum level, we will obtain a very fat and saturated signal. While doing this mix, we can also take advantage of the phase inversion for some waveforms. But let's say that instead of blending three audio waveforms, I want to blend only two audio sources and then use a section of the 3 to 1, like for example the yellow one, to process a bipolar LFO, like I was doing earlier. And I might want to use this LFO to modulate Brainsos wave folder. Now this configuration bears a huge trouble because the LFO is also present in the audio sum, thus adding an unwanted DC component. And that is not very good. And this is why we implemented the unpatched output. So if I patch this output to my CGM instead, I will obtain only the sum of the red and the green sections. Because the unpatched output signal only sums those sections with no jack plugged to their output. So if I patch my cable to the red output instead, I will exclude it from the mix and bring back the yellow one. If I patch a cable to all the outputs, the unpatched output will be silent. Now I am free to process my LFO through the yellow sections without the fear of affecting the sum of the red and the green one. This output here also features the minus 6 dB switch, in case my signals are too hot. But this is true also the other way around case, for example, I want to process and sum two separate CVs. In this case, I use the Sapel N plus 1 output and a unipolar LFO from Falistri's green section. And I can use the unpatched output to send those signals to modulate Brainsos wave folder. At this point, I am still free to use the green section to process the Brainsos wave folder output without affecting the CV controlling it. This was a video tutorial of our 3T1 utility module and its four main functions. Flip, Shift, Scale and Combine.